And another thing is, there are much more people than last time. Now there are much more people. <laughs> I think that there is two times more, more people now than last time. When we were and I believe that we are going to have a good meeting today. I'm, I'm going to speak about forgiving. Because there are many people who have unforgiveness. And God doesn't want you to have any unforgiveness. But I'm going to tell you a key how to forgive. It is the main key in the whole Bible. If God wouldn't have given us our sins, if God wouldn't have forgiven our sins, we wouldn't be here today. And we couldn't be saved. Because if we want to be saved, we need, we need forgiveness from God for it. Let's see what the Bible says about forgiving. And let's read in the Bible. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21. Matthew uh, 18. Matthew 18. Versículo 21, <laughs> versículo 21. 18. Mateo 18, versículo 21. Ok, dice así, Mateo 18, 21. Entonces se le acercó Pedro y le dijo, Señor, ¿cuántas veces perdonaré a mi hermano que peque contra mí hasta siete? Uh, Peter came to ask Jesus, how many times I have to forgive to uh, my brother? Pedro viene y le pregunta a nuestro Señor Jesús, ¿cuántas veces tengo que perdonar a mi hermano? Who sin against me? Que peca contra mí. And uh, Peter asked, Pe uh, Pedro le pregunta, Do I have to forgive even up to seven times? Le tengo que preguntar hasta siete veces. Peter actually, he did it me that seven times. Pero he no estaba refiriéndose eh, específicamente a siete veces. No, he didn't mean up to seven times. He did not mean that, no, that no seven estaba, times only. No se estaba refiriendo solamente a siete veces. Because seven is uh, the number of, of perfection in the Bible. Y se refería porque el número siete en la Biblia se refiere a la perfección. That was P what P Peter was meaning. Y lo que quería decir Pedro es... He meant that do I always have to forgive my brother even if he sins all the time against me? And what was the answer of Jesus? Let's continue reading and let's read it in the Bible. Versículo uh, 22 to 27. Y todo lo que tenía para que se le pagase la deuda. Entonces aquel siervo postrado le suplicaba diciendo, Señor, ten paciencia conmigo y yo te lo pagaré todo. El Señor de aquel siervo, movido a misericordia, le soltó y le perdonó la deuda. Oh, uh, okay. Actually, Peter was meaning seven times. I said it wrong before. Estaba diciendo a Pedro, primero les decía otra cosa, pero Pedro sí estaba refiriendo. Uh, Peter asked Jesus, do I have to give even seven times to my brother who sinned against me? Uh, but Jesus said, not up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. 
17. That Jesus was meaning. ¿Qué le estaba diciendo Jesús con esto? That we have to all the time forgive to our, whoever sins against us. Que nosotros debemos de perdonar todo el tiempo a todo aquel que peque contra nosotros. Amén. There is no can't for that. You have to forgive always if somebody sins against you. ¿Sabías que aquí no hay una, así un límite que tenemos que perdonar cada vez que alguien peque con nosotros? ¿Lo sabían, hermanos? Because you cannot afford to unforgiving, unforgiveness. And, and Jesus is telling example to beat Peter. Uh, Jesus is telling about king. And about his servant. Uh, who owed to king uh, 10,000 talents. Ten thousand talents. It was a lot of money. Ten thousand talents. Nowadays, would be something like about fifty million dollars. I think that in pesos it would be something like one billion. Pesos. Servant debt to king was so much. That it was impossible to, for him to pay it. Uh, when Jesus is speaking about king, king is parable of God here. Uh, this uh, parable is talking about this parable is talking, is talking about it. how much we owe to God before we have uh, been forgiven for our sins. Before we have become believer, our sins against God what we have committed in our lifetime is more than any money ever could pay. They cannot be reconciled in any way, in any earthly way. There is no way that you could pay for your sins. Except through Jesus. Okay, but this continues. Pero esto continúa, vamos a continuar, hermanos. And as we can see in the Bible, como lo vemos aquí en la Biblia, servant didn't have any way to pay his debt to king. Aquí este siervo no tenía ninguna manera de pagarle a su rey. At that time, if you couldn't pay your debt, en ese tiempo, si tú no podías pagar tu deuda, the debtor could uh, come and take all your children and your family to him no and make them ya, your servant. But servant was asking king Pero este le al rey. or he was uh, actually begging to Pero king that if you give me time I will pay my debt to you. And the king, like God, had compassion on him. And forgave him the debt. King forgave to servant the debt he couldn't, couldn't ever pay. This is comparing to sins we have sinned against, committed against God before we have given our love to Jesus. But let's read what happens after that. Pero vamos a leer lo que pasa 
But the story continues. Aquí la historia continúa. Verses 28 to 30. Read it. Pero sabiendo que el siervo halló a uno de sus conciervos que le debía cien denarios y haciendo de él le ahogaba diciendo, págame lo que me debes. Entonces su concierto, postándose a sus pies, le rogaba diciendo, ten paciencia conmigo, yo te lo pagaré todo. Mas él no quiso, sino fue y le echó en la cárcel hasta que pagase la deuda. The servant who had been forgiven for his debt. Este es siguiente que había sido perdonado de toda, toda, toda su deuda. He had another fellow who owed him 100 denarios. Otro pensaba, este siervo tiene otro consiervo y ese le debe 100 denarios nada más. At that time, one denarii was day's wage. ¿Sabes qué? Este tiempo, un denarii era como el pago de un día, el salario de un día de trabajo. So, his fellow owed him about 30 months' salary. Entonces, ¿qué pasó con esto? Que a él, este consiervo le debía como tres meses de salario. It was nothing, 30 months' salary. Tres meses de salario, no se comparaba, hermanos. It was nothing comparing with a debt that uh, the servant was forgiven for by king. But the servant who was forgiven for his debt didn't want to forgive small debt to his fellow servant. Uh, this is speaking about unforgiveness. He had unforgiveness against his fellow servant. And servant said, servant threw his fellow servant into prison there he should pay the whole debt. Do you understand this parable? Uh, Jesus is telling about it. That our debt against God, our debt of sin against God. What we had we have committed against God. Is it is much more bigger than the debt what somebody ha can have against us. La deuda que nosotros teníamos, teníamos con Dios es mucho más grande. Cualquier otro pecado, trans, transgresión que alguien tenga, alguien tenga en contra de nosotros. Is, this is speaking about it. Esto nos está poniendo en el claro, hermanos. That when you have become believer. Que cuando tú vienes a Cristo, vienes a recibir a Jesús. God has forgiven all your sins what you have committed in your whole lifetime. So we have to forgive to each other if, some, if somebody sins against us. Uh, do you understand that if somebody does something bad against you? Uh, it is nothing comparing with it what we have sinned against God. God gave his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And uh, Right when you have given your life to Jesus. When you became newborn believer. Even if you were already 60 or 70 years old. God forgave all your sins in your life, whatever you had ever committed. We have to forgive to each other. That is what God is demanding from us. 
Do you know that unforgiveness is very serious thing? Hermanos, sabían ustedes que la falta de perdón, la amargura contra alguien es una cosa muy seria, un pecado muy serio, ¿lo sabían? Many people have unforgiveness. Hay mucha gente que tiene falta de perdón. Uh, before we were Christians. Antes que nosotros fuéramos cristianos. Uh, We were fighting a lot with uh, my Nosotros, wife. Eh, como, como esposo, esposo, mucho. Uh, a lot. Mucho. I was drinking a lot. Yo mucho I was very aggressive. Era muy agresivo. And uh, my wife Eva. Mi esposa Eva. After that, it was very difficult for her to forgive to me. Para después de eso, para Eva era muy difícil perdonarme. It took about two or three days. He didn't, uh, she didn't even speak to me much. La verdad es que pasaron dos o tres días y no me quería hablar, no podía hablarme. And I couldn't understand it. It was torturing. Para mí era muy feo. Era como una tortura para mí como su esposo. Because I have always been a different person. Yo he sido siempre una otra persona diferente a ella. I could forgive even in five or ten minutes. Yo podía perdonar en cinco o diez minutos cualquier cosa. In my opinion, as far as I understand, I have never had unforgiveness against anybody. But my wife was different. But when we became believers, but I think changed. After we got power of God to live on the inside of us, I'm speaking about the Holy Spirit who is living inside every Christian. She got straight from God. Don't forgive to me. Almost immediately. Uh, I tell you one secret. Te digo un secreto. When you are a believer, Cuando tú eres cristiano, uh, you can forgive. Tú you can forgive. Can or can't? Can, can, can. Tú puedes perdonar. Even whoever has done anything against you. Tú puedes perdonar cualquier cosa que te hayan hecho. Your wife, your husband. Tu esposo, tu esposa, some of your relatives, de tus some of your closest friends, tus amigos más cercanos, you have the power of God by the Holy Spirit to forgive. ¿Sabes qué? Tú el poder del Santo para Unforgiveness is very dangerous. Que la falta de es algo muy you are the one who is suffering most of it. ¿Sabes qué? Tú eres, con falta de perdón, el que Because it binds you. Que la falta de te ata? And it can bring also physical sickness to you. Que la falta de perdón, la te puede uh, uh, Jesus said in the Bible. La Biblia nos dice en la Biblia. Uh, el Señor nos dice en la Biblia. Actually, in a father prayer. Exactamente ahí en la oración del Padre nuestro. It says. ¿Qué dice? That forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. ¿Qué dice la Biblia? Dice que nosotros debemos perdonar a los que nos ofenden como Dios nos perdona a nosotros también. Oh, but let's continue reading Matthew 18 and uh, verses uh, 31 to 35. Vamos a seguir leyendo en, el, en, el, en la Biblia en, en que se planteó. Matthew se llama. It continues. Viendo sus conciertos, lo que pasaba, se entristecieron mucho y fueron y refirieron a su Señor todo lo que había pasado. Entonces, llamándole a su Señor, le dijo, Ciego malvado, toma aquella deuda, te perdoné, ¿por qué me, ¿por qué me rogaste? ¿No debías tú también tener misericordia de tu conciervo como yo tuve misericordia de ti? Entonces, su señor enojado le entregó a los verdugos hasta que pagase toda la, lo que debía. Así también mi Padre Celestial hará con vosotros si no perdonáis de todo corazón cada uno a su hermano sus ofensas. When the king heard what uh, the servant had done, 
Cuando el rey oyó lo que este siervo había hecho. That he didn't give, he didn't forgive debt to his fellow servant. Que él no había perdonado a su consiervo la deuda que tenía. King got mad at him. El rey se enoja con él. And King said. Y el rey qué le dice? You wicked servant. Dice que siervo malvado. I forgive you all that debt because you begged me. Yo te perdoné toda la deuda porque me rogaste. Should you not also have a compassion on your fellow servant? ¿Qué tú no deberías de tener compasión por los otros? Uh, and when uh, Jesus, as uh, Jesus says in this parable. Y cuando Jesús dice esto en la parábola. The king delivered him to the torturers. Le dice tú que el rey lo va a, a, a dejar ahí para que los verdugos lo atormenten. Until he should pay all that was due to him. ¿Para qué? Para que también a él lo atormenten hasta que le pague todo. And Jesus said, so my heavenly father will also you to do if you do. ¿Y qué dijo Jesús? Uh, dice, así también hará mi Padre Celestial con ustedes si no perdonan a otros. If you don't forgive from, uh, to each other from his heart, si no de todo a los que los your brother's trespasses. Las de otros en de ti. Do you know what this means? ¿Sabes qué decir esto? If we don't forgive to each other, que si no a otros, our Heavenly Father, God doesn't forgive us. This is extremely dangerous. Esto es algo muy peligroso, Can you see how important it is to forgive? ¿Sabes qué importante es que Many families are broken because of unbelief. Hay muchas familias rotas por falta de perdón. Many divorces come because of unbelief. Muchas separaciones y divorcios existen hoy porque no se perdonan unos a otros. But most of all, un unforgiveness is Uh, binding you. What does this mean if Jesus said that your heavenly Father doesn't forgive you if you don't forgive to each other? Uh, does it mean that you can even lose your salvation if you don't forgive? If you don't forgive? Que perdemos nuestra salvación si no nos perdonamos. I don't know about that. Exactamente no lo dice, pero ponte a pensar qué quiere decir eso. But think about one thing. Pero ponte a pensar una cosa muy importante. If you have unforgiveness against si somebody. Si tú tienes falta de perdón en contra de alguien que te hizo algo. And like Bible says, God doesn't forgive you your sins. La Biblia dice claramente que Jesús tampoco nos perdona nuestros pecados. How you can go to heaven if you are not forgiven for your sins? Because the, because the point is, going to heaven, you have to be forgiven for your sins. And if you have unforgiveness in your heart, it's sin against God. So conclusion of that is that you might lose your salvation, you are risking your salvation. I'm speaking about this. Because this is a very serious subject. And Bible says here. Uh, that uh, king Saruhim him gave him to torturers prison guards that time had a way to uh, they were torturing, torturing prisoners tormenting prisoners But because this what Jesus is telling is a parable, spiritual parable. Uh, this means that if you have unforgiveness. 
que si tú tienes falta de perdón you are opening door to heaven uh, to he devil tú le estás abriendo una puerta al diablo I mean to devil to demonic spirits to uh, attack you aquí le estamos abriendo una puerta al diablo con la amargura a los vecinos los demonios que vienen en los cielos que te ataquen y te atormenten but this is This is what I mean when I've been speaking about the, that unforgiveness binds you. Uh, demonic spirit, demons have opened door uh, in your life if you have unforgiveness. Can you see how, how important it is to forgive? ¿Te das que es que And Jesus said that we have to forgive from our heart. Forgiving is not a thing of feelings. El perdón, hermanos, no es cosa de It's not emotional thing. No es If you go go according to your feelings, when you feel that you feel forgive, it probably never happens. It's about it that you want to forgive from your heart. What God needs is that you want to forgive. That's all. Uh, I'm going to tell you one example. In Finland, uh, when we had a church, I was pastoring a church. And uh, there was one brother, he was about 60 years old that time. And he had had unforgiveness against his parents since childhood. He had been a believer for 14 years already. But he still had unforgiveness. Because his parents, when he was a child, had left him. They had, they had rejected him. And he had been living with his aunt. But I was speaking about unforgiveness. Uh, is impossible to him who believes. Yes, you can forgive if you want. Uh, you don't have to feel like that. But if you trust, say that I'm going to forgive to that person who has sinned against me. So God takes your word and gives your strength to forgive. And 
el emotions and feelings they come later on entonces las, las emociones los sentimientos vendrán después pero, pero es una decisión que abre la puerta para sacar todo you just have to make decision that today I want to forgive tú tienes que tomar la decisión hoy yo quiero hoy perdonar I'm going to forgive to my wife I'm going to forgive to my husband I'm going to forgive to my relative yo voy a perdonar a mi esposo yo voy a perdonar a mi esposa yo voy a perdonar a mis familiares a todo aquel que me ofendió one very important thing una cosa muy importante hermanos if you have unforgiveness saben que escúchenme si tienen It might be your physical sick. It might be your physical sick. ¿Sabes que te puede traer también enfermedad física? Uh, medical science. La ciencia médica. Can define at least 50 different sicknesses that comes by unforgiveness. Por lo menos unas 50 enfermedades la ciencia médica certifica que pueden venirnos por la falta de perdón y la amargura. Rheumatic diseases, arthritis, and those kind of sicknesses are typical. They come by unforgiveness. Heart diseases, all different kind of diseases, even cancers, even cancers. If you have unforgiveness, it can bring even cancer to you. Si tú estás cargando falta de perdón a manura contra alguien, te puede acarrear hasta un cáncer. Because if you have unforgiveness, porque si tú traes falta de perdón, it brings bitterness to you. Sabes qué? Te trae amargura a tu vida. And bitterness brings hatred. Y sabes qué? La amargura no se queda más ahí después que el odio. And at the end, you have hatred against that person whom you have. Unforgiveness. And the Bible says, if you hate your father, he is a murderer. And no murderer has eternal life living on the inside of him. It doesn't mean that you physically murder somebody, kill somebody, but it means that you are emotionally, from your heart, murderer already. Before God, before God, this is important. I'm gonna tell you one example. I remember when I was reading the book of Young Ito. And he said uh, that uh, one woman uh, from his one sister from his congregation. Once came to him. And she said that she had a. Uh, half of her body was paralyzed. Half of her body. Uh, and Young Cho, he was praying for her three and a half hours. And nothing happened. And because Young Cho was man of faith. Y porque el pastor de Cristo era un hombre de fe. And he believed what Bible says. Él creía lo que la Biblia dice. Because the Bible says. Porque la Biblia nos dice. If somebody is sick, they uh, when they pray for her, uh, heal, uh, they lay hands upon sick people and they will get healed. Dice que los que estuvieran en el cuerpo podrán las manos sobre los enfermos y ellos sanarán. And he was wondering why nothing happens, even if he has, he has been praying more than three hours already. Suddenly God uh, said he said to him, uh, ask her if she has any unforgiveness against anybody. And when he asked, From woman, if she has any unforgiveness against her. The woman said, "Yes, I have unforgiveness and bitterness against my husband." Uh, 
But the pastor asked her, y el pastor entonces le pregunta, Do you want to forgive him now? Oye, ¿quieres perdonar ahora a tu esposo? She said yes. Ella dice sí. And when she said yes, y cuando ella dice sí, she was healed of panola, panolysis immediately. Ella fue sana de la parálisis de inmediato, de manera milagrosa. But the pastor didn't have to even pray for her anymore. Y el pastor diciendo que orar por ella, pum, empieza a ti, que she se was, normaliza su cuerpo. She was healed immediately. Y ella fue sana de manera milagrosa inmediatamente. Paralysis came by unbelief, by Bitterness. La, la parálisis de por una amargura, la falta de perdón que estaba cargando. And when she forgave before God, en el momento que ella recibe, dice Dios, yo perdono. God healed, he, God healed her immediately. Su sanidad viene y ella la recibe en el nombre de Jesús. God, you see how important physically is forgiving. ¿Sabes qué importante ahora? ¿Te das cuenta de la importancia del perdonar? God can afford to tell you to forgive. Dios hace bien, ahora sí que la autoridad para decir, ¿sabes qué? Perdona, Él puede ordenarnos, perdonen. God never ask you to do anything or uh, ask you to forgive. God doesn't ¿Sabes qué? Dios never. nunca te pide algo o perdonar. It's commandment. No te reza como su hijo. It's up to you. Nos está diciendo como una orden, perdonen. It's up to you if you obey it or not. Él tiene la autoridad para decirnos que es ahora tú. You have your own will if you want to obey or not. God doesn't do anything against your will. God doesn't uh, force you to forgive. But if you not forgive, you take consequences after that. First of all, you are risking your salvation. Primero, como vimos, estás arriesgando tu salvación and you, are, and you are risking it that you might get you might get sick by unforgiveness. Y luego con esa amargura puedes estar arriesgando que te venga esta una enfermedad. How God can afford to uh, uh, tell you to forgive? Y por qué nuestro Dios puede tener esa autoridad de decir yo puedo levantarse más que Because he gave his son Jesus Christ to die for your sins. And even if you have murdered somebody, even if you have mutilated somebody, when you have asked, when you have asked forgiveness from God. He has forgiven it to you. So God, can, so God can afford to tell you to forgive to your neighbor. God gave his son Jesus Christ to die for us. He gave everything what we had for us God became man in Jesus Christ to, uh, that you can get saved and get eternal life When Jesus was hanging on the cross, Jesus was tortured. Jesus, Jesus was beaten. Jesus was in terrible condition physically. Uh, two uh, Roman soldiers had tortured him so that he was almost dying already. And then he was crucified. But when Jesus was hanging on the cross, Jesus looked at those people who had crucified him. Mira 
who were about to kill him. And Jesus was looking at them. And then he looked to the heaven. And he was uh, asking Father. Father, forgive them. But they don't know what they are doing. Can you reach out to that? Can you do it? If you are about to die when somebody is killing you, stopping you. Can you pray to God as Jesus did? And ask him. Father, forgive him because he doesn't know what he is doing. God can afford to tell us to forgive to each other. Unforgiveness binds you. Unforgiveness opens the door for sickness and brings sicknesses. Unforgiveness brings bitterness and hatred. And you are risking of losing your salvation. None of us can afford to unforgiveness. None of us. But this is the most important thing in whole Christian life. Today I'm going to lead you to prayer. If you have any unforgiveness in your heart against anybody. Uh, I'm going to lead you to prayer that you can forgive to your neighbor, to your wife, to your husband, to your relative, to your friend. I believe that none of us, before we die, none of us wants to have any unforgiveness in us. Do you know, if you forgive from your heart, so many people have testified about it, how they feel on the inside of them, how they get free. It changes your whole life. You're like newborn after that. And you know what? Today I'm going to pray for sick people also. And if you have been sick, and you might have had sickness for a long time already, who knows if it, if it has been unforgiveness and bitterness that has brought that sickness to you, that is fine. Probably you have been prayed for many times already for us to get healed. But it hasn't happened. It might be because if you have had unforgiveness or bitterness in your heart that you don't get healed before you forgive. But today you can settle accounts with God. I'm going to leave you to prayer now, to forgive. Uh, everybody who has unforgiveness, stand up, I'm going to pray. Okay.